floss tube and welcome to my new video it's been three weeks since i saw you last and i had totally planned on filming last friday but life happened um, my sister came over we had a very fun weekend with uh, the two of us and our boyfriends we ate a lot we played some fun games and we had a good time so i'm really not mad that it didn't happen but i'm here now i have made a buttload of progress and I'm really 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 proud of myself I did not expect to get this much done but I did I hit like a little bit of a slump around the weekend but it was to be expected with having people over um, but all in all really good so I want to start the video off with two FFOs um, I actually always get them framed at home and my sister lives pretty close to the framer so I asked her to pick them up and bring them to me, which she did. Um, these have been in my box of shame for a very, very, very long time. And I'm happy that they're finally here and they're finally framed. So um, what I do, I supply my framer with the frames I want to get them framed in. I usually pick those up at secondhand stores, Ikea, um, all budget stores equivalent to dollar stores and those kinds of things because I really only need someone to stretch it for me and make like a mat, which my framer does an excellent job and I'm so happy I've been going there with all of my needlework and it's always super pretty. So without further ado, my first one. I hope the glare is not so bad. The last video, the glare was really bad, but I think it's better. It was overcast all afternoon, and I kid you not, three minutes ago, the sun started shining. So, <laughs> um, this is DMC Windsor Castle Evening, and it was a kit, and I stitched it on the kit material. It's an Ada, 16 count Ada, I'm pretty sure. And I see like a little bit of a wrinkle, but you only really see this in the video. I see it here, but you cannot really see it in real life. Either way, I supplied the frame and the color of the mat. We picked like the bright, the lightest yellow that was in the reflection on the lake. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. This is a really lightweight flame. But as I said, this these are all cheap frames. And they um, nail it. The back, they nail to it. And they usually put some kind of hook on there so that it can hang them up. So yeah, that's the first one. Really happy with how that turned out. Really does it justice. And the second one that's also been in my box of shame for a really long time. Also, this is a secondhand frame. I picked these up at a secondhand store. It's run by a local church. It's not actually here in Germany. It's in Holland, back home. And I went there right before I got everything framed and I found this frame there and it's actually perfect. And this is a project by Bothy Threads. This is no longer available. This has been discontinued for a long time. And this is called Heroes. I have no relationship with Great Britain, but I just like the picture. And it's one of the very first things that I bought when I started stitching and it's been in my box of shame for five years and I finally got a friend. And what I really like about this, I picked a white mat. Oh, this is actually all paper. So I don't know what you call this, but for easiness sake, let's just call this matting, but it's paper. And here, the inside of this paper mat is red. And I really like the contrast that it gives. It really makes the picture pop. And this frame is definitely not the nicest anymore. I mean, this like scratch is on, but I, it gives it a lot of character. And now my low power mode for my iPhone came up, so low battery, but it should still be good till the end of the video. Either way, I love it. It's also a stitch on Ada, and I'm just very happy with it. The reflections that you see on the frame are actually cars that are passing by weird so yeah I got these two back from the framers and I think I paid by supplying my own 
frames. I think I paid, for this frame, I paid two euro. For the other silver frame, I think I paid one euro. And then for the framing, both of them together, I paid 50 euro. So I got two framed pictures, both kind of large for under 55 euro. So I'm really happy. And usually if I don't take any matting or whatsoever, the um, um, Valentine's Mirabilia that I showed you last video, she was actually framed for 15. So they are very great and I love them. And I'm already figuring out what else to give them next. And another thing I got, got framed, I framed myself, which you can tell, but it's fine, is this one. And this is Lizzie Kate Summer. And I did an awful job because this is not in the center. But it actually is kind of charming because I'm thinking I will find something here to put next to it that it, you cannot tell that it's not in the center. But I framed this myself and this is a 99 cent frame from Ikea in a very cute bluey greeny sea tone and I thought it fit perfectly to the house. So I actually instantly frame it. And I think what I'm going to do is these frames come in a couple other colors and I will frame the other three. I have one done, but the other two ones they're also done. I will frame in similar frames that I can just rotate them out through the seasons. And for now, um, my this is my bedroom as you, I'm sitting on my bed and I'm sitting on my bed, sorry. And I keep all of my stitching that is not in season in here. There's a wall right there. Like this is obviously a window as you can tell maybe. Here is a wall and there is quite some of my stitching on it. I can maybe make a little clip later and add it to the end of the video if I don't forget. But most of my stitching is standing around here and then when it gets into season, like right now, I decorate it for Halloween and all of my Halloween stitching is now actually over in my living room. I live in a very tiny apartment, I wouldn't say, but I live in a three room apartment and we rent out one room, so we only have two rooms for ourselves. So I have a living room and a bedroom and that's it. So I do not have a lot of space for my stitching, but since I love it so much, I think it deserves to be out and about. And I am gonna stitch until this whole wall is full. That's my goal. <laughs> so you will see that a little bit later. Um, okay, already eight minutes in, let's get to my update. I am going to try to do it in the order that I stitched them because when I saw you last, I had just started my rotation on Shabby Winter Calendar by Quare et Batiquare, if I say that correctly. And this is where I am now. Ooh, that's a glare. I was just halfway through the gnome last time and now I actually finished the gnome and I started working on the birdhouse and I'll give you a little bit of a close up. Unfold this. The gnome is done in all of its glory and I started working on the birdhouse. I'm actually really pre pleased with how fast that went. And I think I'm I'm pretty confident that I measured correctly because there's only going to be one little square under and then there's going to be a bigger square under, not bigger height wise, but bigger length wise or width wise. So two of these still come under there. So that should fit. And I'm stitching this on 32 count Zweigart in silver gray. And I actually buy these per meter. So I just cut these because I found this really awesome shop that lets me buy them by the meter. The width is 140 and then you can determine um, how much length you want. So it's always 140 by whatever you pick and then the min minimum is 50 centimeters. So I got a piece that was 50 centimeters by 140 centimeters. I do not know what this is in inches, but it's pretty good. So this is half of this. This is half of that piece. This is 70 
by 25? That sounds wrong. I don't know. <laughs> this is not 70 by 25. No, I cut it different. This is 70 by 50. This is how I cut that. Yes, this is 70 by 50 because I cut the 140 through the half. So this is 70 by 50, which is, I guess, 18 by 27 inches. Okay, now I got there. I was just really struggling to think how I cut this, but I have the exact same piece again to stitch something on. Because this is gonna be pretty big. But I thought maybe two small Nora Corbett's would fit on. Who knows? I'm full of plans. I have so much to stitch. And I have serious FOMO. Because I want to stitch all the things. And then every time I'm looking at things to stitch, I'm thinking I could be stitching right now and stitch more things. Talking of a big piece... This is the most gigantic piece ever, and I still don't know why I stitched it on 28 count. But next, I'm standing up now, just to show you all the glory. Next, I worked on this, um, Bygone Stitches, Quaker Christmas, and I actually almost finished the sixth page. So now that you saw it completely, I'm going to come back in, set back down and focus on the part that I actually did get done. I was halfway through the Oh Holy Night. Um, what do I wanna say here? I had the word in my head and then it, then it flew away. Motif. I was halfway through the Oh Holy Night motif um, when I started on this. And this right here, is the border of this motif and then the saying which is going to be we wish you a merry christmas is continuing up to here so yeah i'm almost done actually with with this whole whole page i'm really happy with the progress that i made there because i think in the next five hours i could actually finish the page six and then I'm going to continue with the last two pages that come under here which they are slightly smaller and I don't think I can finish it this year because I have way too much planned other than this but this is definitely going to be done early next year which I'm very excited about and I think since this is so massive and truly special that I'm gonna splurge on custom framing, which still won't be as crazy expensive as in America, but it's still gonna be expensive. Um, the only piece right now that I got custom framed was a Halloween piece that is actually in the other room, which um, I think I paid 60 euros for. No matting, just the frame, which I think is pretty good. It's, 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 a little bit smaller than this one but not much so I don't have always have to break the back which is good and this is stitched on always forget to tell you 28 count lamb's wool jobelin and this is a 27 by 36 inch piece of fabric and I'm stitching this with um, the gentle art mistletoe 0113 which I should still have enough. I have a couple of skeins. And my absolute favorite variegated thread ever. If you ever get the chance to stitch anything with Threadworks, do it. It's so awesome to work with. Threadworks, beautiful variegation. And this is 1085. And I am actually already slowly starting to think of the next sampler I want to stitch after this one. And I want to do it with a Threadworks as well. And there's so many crazy cool colors. And I'm going to pick something crazy but cool. And it's going to be awesome. And I don't know what sampler yet, but 
something monochromatic, pandemic, or another long dog sampler, or another one of the bygone stitches, something. It's going to be awesome. All the things are going to be awesome. The next thing I started was um, something quite different, actually. Um, this is Yuletide Garden Labyrinth by Carolyn Manning. And this is actually just a lot of quilt-like motifs. And I didn't actually think that I would like stitching this, but it's actually been really fun because it's very repetitive and this is kind of relaxing. Don't really have to think about it. I can just copy here, copy there, copy there, which is really, really kind of relaxing. And I'm stitching this on, um, this is actually one of those Zweigart painted fabrics because there's the modeling, very clear. And there's no modeling at all on the back side. And I cut this piece in half and I, for this one, I chose the one with the modeling, but I might choose the unmodeled side for something else. Um, but yeah, actually really like it. I have also been looking at her, I guess it's called Broken Glass series, which she does in all kinds of cool colors and grandma's quilts or grandma's squares. There's a couple ones that I'm interested in. Not so much because they're really my aesthetic, but I think they're gonna be just very fun to stitch, especially some of the color combinations. I saw some sunset -y colors with like oranges and reds and yellows which are basically all of my favorite colors so I think that could be cool to stitch in the future and this is actually also by Zweigart as I probably already said and this is also a 32 count and this is one of their pre-cuts in the German name is vintage milk cafe which I think you could best translate to vintage milk coffee I don't know if it exists under that name, but it's something in that vein, like milk coffee, coffee latte, or something like this. And then I continued with, I don't know exact the order, but I think I did it this way around. I continued working on my Mirabilia, because I hope to have at least one finished before sometime like I want to have one finished and as you might know by now I'm working on number one MD1 Damask Roses and she's so massive <laughs> every time I pick her out I'm like there's so much of her that I still have to do but five hours closer to a finish um last time I had just completed the whole pillar that she's sitting on and I decided to work my way down on her dress so the pillar was last time and now I um, I tried to figure out to show you where I started and what I actually stitched but um, here there's the line I really cut like a straight line everything under there I stitched that's five hours people and I got pretty far down one of the colors this is all the way here but she has a long, long way to go and lots of blues, but I still love her and I think she's turning out fabulous, especially on camera. She looks really good. So the line, the, the wrinkly part, the wavy part is actually here, the yellows. And I decided to skip her for now and I think I'm going to work down all the way to the yellows here. And then all at once do all the yellows. That is my plan. And then I'm going to finish her dress and work then up. So I want to do that band because that's similar colors. And then do the, the top part. Because once I hit the top part, this is really the least amount to do. And I'm really still deciding if I'm going to do the border. Because this is not actually a variegated thread. This is just all different symbols, all different colors, DMC. Since the only thing is, I thought if I'm gonna be framing her super close to the edge, 
like her dress here and here is going over that border. So maybe I might do that border because it looks kind of cool. So let me know, what do you think? Should I do the border or not? Not that this is a question for 2020. This is more a question of 2022. But it's good to think about it. At least I'm very happy to be working on her again because I was a really a little bit demotivated to work on her since she's so massive, but I actually feel quite good. And I just keep plugging away one stitch at a time and at some point she's gonna be finished. And then I did a thing because last time I talked about my love, 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 love for Mail Hill Santas, that it's my life's goal to finish every single one of them. And I thought how better to accomplish this goal than work on it every single day. So um, last, not last Wednesday, the week before. So now almost two and a half weeks ago, I um, started working on a Santa and I have been doing, except for yesterday and today, I still have to do those, stitch 25 stitches every day on the Santa. And that's what I've been doing. And I'm gonna do this until I run out of Santas. So from that day until at least the next 365 days, so at least for a full year, I'm gonna stitch on a Santa 25 stitches every single day or catch up in that week. I mean, equivalent of 25 stitches every single day. It's gonna be an adventure and I'm really curious to see how many I will finish. But right now, I'm working on Bear, no, this is not Bear Tooth Santa, Teton, Teton Santa, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce this, Teton Santa, he's adorable, he is a brother of the other Rocky Mountain Santa that I finished with the eagle, and I don't know what that one's called, because there's so many Santas, either way. I'm gonna put this fabric behind. I've been stitching now two full weeks on it, doing 25 stitches a day. It's very hard to see this gold, but I actually already color completed the red and the brown. And I also, for the red, did instantly the beading. I forgot one bead, which I still have to do, but all good. And I think that my tactic always is gonna be uh, color completion. So I'm going to finish this gold color on the ram or the a ram. Yes, a ram. And then I'm going to do, if there's beads with this color, I'll do the beads and then go to the next color. And I think that's the easiest because I keep all of my supplies out. And if I color complete, I can just take the threads and the beads that I finished out, which I did with the red beads before I realized that I actually forgot a bead, so I still have to grab everything again, but will happen. Or maybe I'll fudge it and use one of the colors around it to just make it pretty. So from, I guess every two weeks you will see a Santa and slowly but surely the army of Santas will grow. So three more things I have to show you. Because, of course, I also had finishes. They are a little bit cheating, but they're finishes. So, I thought, as always, that I could be super fast and just crank out a finish in two and a half hours and realize, no, you cannot do this. Because this little thing that I have finished now took me four hours and ten minutes. <laughs> I stitch on it like forever I felt like because I did all the colors and then I had to do backstitch with five different colors but I am so proud of my French knots these are the best French knots I've ever made and I'm so proud of it and this is my back in case someone is interested in how I do my stitching I don't care what my back looks like yes I carry my threads as you can tell, I carried the white thread all over the place, but I don't care because <laughs> it looks good from the front. 
I have actually noticed that you shouldn't carry your black threads because I have something framed where I carried black threads and it is actually visible, but it's okay. It's mine and it's not perfect, but it's cool. And the other thing I finished basically the day after is Holly Jolly, which was to be expected because I was pretty far along with it. I just had to do the checkered border and some of the beading and yeah, finished that. The things I still had to le left to do was this star and that star. And those were stitched with thread from hell. I used with my dumb brain, DMC metallics and I regret the decision so hard. That was so hard to stitch with. It frayed, it tangled, it ripped apart. I had to use super small bits, then they came undone, then I couldn't get them back in the needle, then the needle went off again. It was terrible. It was so terrible. But I persevered and there's a couple of stars. I am not, you can even tell like here, I don't know if you can tell, but there is the actually the yellow thread that's in the metallics, which I don't know if it will focus. Don't think it will, but no, it will not focus. No, nope. trying to get it to focus, but it's, yeah, it's actually um, the yellow thread that's actually in the metallics uh, sh is showing through. But I'm gonna just put it very far away and no one will be able to see. And this is my back on this one, a little bit better, but it's still not so good. But I'm very happy with this. This is the first one in the Ornaments Club by Shannon Christine. All of the ones that came out so far are absolutely super cute. And I want to do all of them on 14 count Ada. Because I'm going to make them into a banner. I'm just going to put the edges really close. And then sew them onto either a point or maybe just a rectangle. And then I'm going to make a Christmas banner. And it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be super cute and it's going to be done in 2022 for Christmas because I have so much planned. I, I plan too much people. And then I worked last, ooh, almost put myself with a needle. Um, last I worked on one of these from the Snow Happens book by Stony Creek. This is book 381 and I'm working on Rain with Attitude. And when I looked at this first, um, when I took it out of my box to work on, I was like, oh my, this, I have so little done. I have so little done. And then I actually realized I did not have so much. I did not have so little done. Because actually last time I worked on it, I finished this entire sign. And this looks little, but this is actually over half of the design. Because this is all empty and sure there's a lot of stitching still left but actually it was not as bad as I thought and I'm actually really happy with the progress I made right now because this is where I got so last time I did the inside of the sign let's clarify this inside of the sign all the um, yellow orange and then the wording with the back stitch I backstitched the width and then this time around I did all of the red I stitched this glove here still have to fill in a couple stitches there I started on this part of the I don't know this is like um I don't know what this is some sort of cloth started on this and I'm pretty much done except for the red pluses and then I started stitching on the signs pull and here there's going to come like a very long scarf all the way here. And this is where the yellow is from. This is part of the scarf already. So yeah, I'm actually pretty happy. So next time I'm going to focus on the pole and then stitching in that scarf. And the scarf is going to be a lot of work because it's a striped scarf. And every single bit is just a couple colors. Like actually, I kid you not. The floss lists for these are so long. 
Mm -mm -mm -mm. I need to grab something. Yeah, not professional, I know, but this is the floss list. It is so many flosses for this project, but actually it gives a great, great depth. And I really like, really like the result because I, I think in the already the signed part, this part, there is six or seven colors, but the result is great. I really love it. And um, actually this is a folded piece. This is um, 32 Count Lugana in Arctic from Pictureless Plus. This is 18 by 27 and this is half. So um, I could actually do something under here, which also very exciting. I didn't cut it yet because I wanted to make sure that it was enough, but it is enough and I'm gonna cut it at some point. Maybe if I actually already want it for something, then I'll cut it, but for now it's all good. So that was already a lot, I know, but I have one more thing, which is lying on my desk. I'm gonna grab it really quickly. And this is the thing I started working on yesterday evening. I've only worked on it for 30 minutes and it is a project by Design Works, and it is Life is Too Short to Wait, or Life is Short by Design Works. And I'm stitching this, it's a kit. The threads do not come sorted, but there's five, six colors in here. So it's all good. I can figure out which one's green, which one's gold, and which one's orange. And I started on yesterday evening and I have the gold finished for the O and I started working on the R. And this is done on 14 count Navy, Navy Ada. And it's actually really very fun and my stitches look very good on this fabric. And this is actually a little bit neater. It didn't carry so many threads. So yeah. That's what I've been up to in the last three weeks. So plans. I have actually a list worked out. I plan usually 25 projects ahead. So I allocate what I do is in case you're interested. If you're not interested, thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. If you are interested in how I do my planning, then stick around, then I'm gonna try to explain. So I stitch in rotations. I stitch in five hour rotations. I started doing this year in 10, but I feel like five is a more comfortable number because five is really doable. It's, it's, I can do it in a day if I want to, if I have a lot of stitching time and I can, um, even if I don't like the projects, I can still manage to do five hours in two days or three days, depending on how, many, how much time I have. But it doesn't drag on forever like it did with 10 hours. So five hour rotations. And I love a good challenge and I love all of the sales that Stitch Mania has been doing and Enchanted Stitching Challenges and magical stitches and all these groups i've been i've been i'm a part of all these groups but i just cannot keep up with all of the sales i i just can't because i want to stitch on something for five hours and there's just too many sales going on so what i've been doing is i go through the sales from stitch mania i go through the prompts from instant enchanted stitching challenges and I write them down in a list, just the prompts. So for example, I've been going through the very first month of challenges from um, Enchanted Stitching Challenges, which was Sleeping Beauty themed, and I wrote them all down. And I picked some of the early sales from uh, Stitch Mania, and I wrote them down. And I created like a list of about 25 the first time around. And um, each sal has has a prompt. I mean, uh, Stitch Mania does sales for specific designers, does sales for specific objects or a thread or a bead or metallics. And the same with enchanting, Enchanted Stitching Challenges. They have like a prompt or um, with a Sleeping Beauty, there was um, stitch something in the color of the fairies or 
something like this. And I write these prompts down and then I allocate projects to them. So I, I start with just whatever projects I have already in my normal box. There's around 10 to 11 projects in there. I have more, but I have more works in progress, but I made like one tiny box with 10 to 11 projects, which I call my whip box. It's, it all fits in here. And these is where, these are the ones that I get to pick from first. So if it's something blue, I would pick damask roses. Uh, if it's something, um, I had some prompt where it was um, use something as a weapon and I picked like the labyrinth. So, cause the labyrinth is like hard to get out to. So you can use it as a weapon. And I try to just match loosely or however I can, I match these to those prompts. Um, mind you, these are sales from Stitch Mania out of, uh, from 2016 and the Enchanted Stitching Challenges are from 2019. So they're not recent. I am a stickler for doing everything and I just started at the beginning and I will probably reach Stitch Mania cells that are recent somewhere in 2032, but that's okay. And um, yeah, so that's how I do it. Uh, and if uh, one of my projects doesn't fit, so for example, um, I, la la I had a couple weeks ago that I had to stitch on a Doctor Who project and this was doctor's books, I actually look in my stash or I look online and I pick a project from this, uh, like a new one. So this is how I get new starts, like Life is Too Short or the Yuletide Garden Labyrinth, then I just pick something new. Um, this is also going to happen with, with some more designers in the future. I have some Brooks books coming up and I have some Chatelaine coming up. Um, those are all going to be new starts and I'm really excited for those. So. If you're interested in future plans and some of the things, how I link them, uh, please let me know. I'm, I'm willing to tell you at the end of the video or even at the beginning as I do them, what they're linked to and how I link them. Um, if not, that's also fine. I mostly do this for myself, but I think it's fun. Um, it keeps me really motivated to work on my projects because it's fun. It's like list, I'm a, like a list person. Um, I get to check off things and then each five hour rotation earns me two euro fifty um, for a stitchy budget. So this is how I also earn money to spend on stitching. And I have been saving up. I have almost 100 euros. I'm like at 98 right now. 89, sorry, 89. So I have 11 more to go. And I'm waiting until I hit that 100 because I want to do a big order at 123 Stitch in hopes that it arrives before Christmas. So that's the plan going forward. Um, so yeah, that's basically all I wanted to tell. Uh, I thought this was gonna be a short video. I'm very sorry, three weeks of progress plus my planning tactic. So either way, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you wanna share something with me or ask me something or whatever. I love to hear from you, so please leave me a comment and maybe you can chat a little bit. Um, also, if you're on Instagram, uh, let me know. I am at Jace Stitching and um, follow me or send me a message there and I can follow you back and I can see um, what you've been up to. I've actually already been following some of you, so that's really cool to see what you guys are up to. And yeah, I, um, I hope to get as much done in the next two weeks. So um, I will see you in two weeks. Bye, happy stitching guys.